Hello everyone. Welcome to the second episode of the Fulbright Women Podcast Season 1. The guest we have today is Mahin Kosa. Mahin holds a master's degree in international affairs from the Columbia University. And currently, she's the manager of communications and outreach at the Institute of Development and Economic Alternatives in Lahore. Mahin is also a mother of two. She holds more than 10 years of experience and wants to continue being a professional while also spending quality time with her kids. Is she asking for too much? Let's find out directly through her. Hi, Mahin. Hi, Safiya. Thanks so much for having me here with you today. Thank you for taking out time for this podcast. No, absolutely. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, the day was a bit chaotic as days tend to be these days, uh, but it's it's absolutely my pleasure to be here with you today. You are, Mahin, a manager of communication and outreach at ITS in Lahore, right? Uh, could you talk about your professional commitments on a day-to-day basis? Right. So I uh, manage the communications at uh, Ideas, which is a small think tank based in Lahore. Uh, they do a lot of really, in, we do a lot of really interesting research on a number of different areas like human development, which includes education, health um, and governance, which includes a whole slew of issues. Uh, so really uh, interesting, relevant, current research on a number of things. Um, and my job basically is to make that research palatable to as wide an audience as possible. Um, So on a day-to-day basis, uh, that can range from anything um, pre-pandemic, especially it could be events. These days, obviously, we're not doing in-person events, but that means that we have to adapt to, you know, whatever the current environment is. So managing a lot of the social media, managing uh, internal communications, uh, a lot of the written content that goes out, all of that uh, falls under my domain. Um, So that's what I do. Um, in in as in like in a really brief uh, description. That's really interesting. Yeah. What makes you yeah. so passionate about your work? Um, I uh, so I, I I have a background in research. So I suppose the thing that I am truly truly passionate about is research. I I'm I'm sort of a information geek. I love finding out. Um, you know, really obscure, really. Uh, not just obscure, but you know, all sorts of things, things that people seem, uh, people see as being really basic or really mundane that you don't really think about. But I like, I've always liked finding out about things and that I was, I suppose I was fortunate enough to sort of go into policy research initially as uh, something that I was truly interested in uh, post my um, uh, graduate degree. Uh, so I suppose what I'm truly interested in is uh, what I'm truly passionate about is research. But what makes my current job really interesting for me is um, the fundamental question of what good is research if nobody is reading it. Um, you kind of have to, as a development communications professional, you kind of have to push for your role in a lot of organizations. And I've been fortunate to have an organization which kind of recognizes the need for this role as well, because without somebody finding ways to make the information that you're looking up, the research that you're doing accessible and palatable, um, no one is really going to know, right? No one is really going to understand what's being done. No one is going to have answers to questions which people may have. Um, and no one is going to be in a position to act on it, like policymakers, for example. So I think that's what makes my job uh, so interesting and so relevant uh, to so much work that's being done these days that makes yeah. complete sense you said a couple of things here you said you yeah. are a geek your passion yeah. is about research and i yeah. would like to add to that there's another role that you're very that you absolutely love and it's really important for you that is the role of being a mother i mean yeah i absolutely love being a mother it's one of those uh, you know it's one of those things where it's one of those roles where all the cliches you read about it are absolutely true. Like in one moment, you're ready to pull your hair out. And in the next moment, you can't imagine life before uh, you were this person that you are to these to these little beings who look up to you for all the answers for everything that um, they need. Um, so, yeah, so I absolutely love uh, being that person, being that role. Um, it's been, I would say it's been 
if there's one way that i describe it uh, it's been a learning experience if you know um, that's putting it simply really it's you know it's one of those roles where you learn on the job practically every single day and the the, the day you feel like you've got a handle on it the day you feel like okay this is the day i have it all figured out is the day your kids will throw a curve ball at you and everything will change like i wouldn't say that i have it all figured out really it's something that changes constantly it's something that evolves constantly so it's um i suppose the the way that i try to do it is that i try to be um as organized as possible that's something that you'll hear a lot of working mothers say you know just be as organized as possible some days it works out great some days it works out terribly and you feel like it's all slipping through your fingers um so try to be as i try to be as organized as possible i try to be um as efficient as i possibly can in short periods of time because you know that the one thing that you kind of miss out on is a long stretch of time to get something done um so you learn to do a lot of stuff in a very short span of time um so i yeah i suppose that's those are some of the ways that i do it and also i mean you end up having to rely on like a network of people around you you know it they say it takes a village uh, again a cliche which ends up being true is that it takes a village to raise kids it in this case it truly truly feels that way because you end up in a situation where you can't you absolutely cannot do it alone it's just not possible so yeah, what that's what happened your um biggest takeaways you know in trying to balance the motherhood and the professional responsibilities um so sophia so this is something that i think about a lot you know and i've thought about it quite uh, a lot over the years as well uh, throughout my time as since i've had kids basically i mean i've been working for about 10 years now but since i've had kids really um it's just been something that i think about almost every other day and i think that uh, for me the takeaways would be uh, like i i consider myself really fortunate because i have been in a position where i've had a lot of uh, flexibility and a lot of um leave away from organizations where i have worked uh, be- because of my commitments as a parent as well but at the same time i have also experienced what a lot of mothers experience as a general uh, principle in the workplace in terms of how people perceive working mothers like i think one of the biggest um, most jarring examples for me was that i was in a meeting and this is at a previous job many years ago and i was at a meeting where there was a there was a gentleman who was a former civil servant and he was sitting there and he was talking about um we were talking about work hours and there was some conversation about women having to leave early around 2 p 2 pm 230 around that time when kids normally get off school and he just casually brushed it off and laughed and said oh i can't imagine leaving early but you know if it's a if it's a woman she'll just say i have to pick my kids from school and she'll just leave and i remember sitting there just being completely flabbergasted because i was like i could not understand um the casual dismissal of this mother whose shoes i could place myself in completely because i can imagine her sitting there thinking okay i have to wrap up all my work by 2 pm because i have to leave i have to get to my kids school pick them up take them home give them lunch or organize their lunch and then perhaps come back to work perhaps work from home and figure out the rest of my day and this gentleman who in all probability has never picked up his own kids from school or has not considered the possibility that as a father you could also be the one to pick up your kids from school so that your wife gets or the working mother that you're talking about gets the chance to work that whole stretch from 9 to 5 um he hasn't considered that as an active possibility and he's just casually dismissed this working mother as being inefficient or not present while to me the opposite is what is completely the case right so i i remember being really down that day because i remember thinking that no matter how much you do and no matter how much you think you've achieved and no matter how much things may be smooth for you as an individual as as a as a, at a, at a, at a societal level and as a collective we're still so much 
further behind where we need to be because the general perception is this. The general perception is that a working mother will be inefficient. The general perception is that a working mother will not be fully present, that she'll not get as much work done. While none of that is true, you know, that that really isn't true. I mean, you read any good research on how much women work, um, combining their paid work and their unpaid work and their caregiving duties, it's the total amount of time that women work is just more than men, honestly. Um, so I think for me, the takeaway in that situation was that um, there is so much more that we need to do. And I suppose I just kept coming back to the question of how, how can one do this? Because it's not possible to change it um, as an individual. It just isn't. It's it's, it needs to be a bigger change. It needs to be a bigger push. And it's just not, and as I suppose as cynical as this will sound, it's just not happening simply by more and more women joining the workforce. That just doesn't seem to be enough. So there does need to be more done on it. Um, Mahin, I'm going yeah. to stop you here because there, yeah. you talked about perceptions and assumptions that people carry, you know, misconceptions yeah. about motherhood and how dismissive they can be about, you know, uh, the role of working mothers, right? Yeah. Where do you think it is stemming from? I mean, in one word, it's it's the patriarchy, right? It's just that's what it always boils down to, as overused as that word seems some days. But that is what it is, because, um, again, I've been reading some really interesting research on this, and it um, it's not just as, as bad as things are for us here in South Asia and in Pakistan. Um, it's the same everywhere. The 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 idea that the domestic responsibility is primarily with the woman is so predominant that it it just doesn't seem to be balancing out the same way. Even in countries like in parts of Scandinavia, where the child caregiving responsibilities are divided far more equally between men and women than they are here the domestic responsibilities like taking care of the house and the errands and everything that we know goes into running a household will predominantly be with women. Um, so I think a lot of it comes from how the patriarchy has set up these very rigid roles of men versus women and this sort of uh, subliminal messaging that goes out about how a man's responsibility is towards his work while a woman's responsibility is, yeah, okay, it's great if she's working, but fundamentally, if the house is falling apart, that's the woman's fault. And to me, the question is always why, you know, why? Why is that just so uh, commonly taken as normal? That's not normal. There are so many things that we put, and this, I think, it to me, that leads me back to my role as a mother and about what we teach our children so that what 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 do they grow up considering as normal? What do what what will my daughter take away as being her role as a girl and as a woman when she grows up? And what will my son take away as being his role and his right and his and his versus his responsibilities? Like it's all, and then it's just like a series of questions in my head about where all of that goes. But I think it's yeah, I think it's that more than anything else. So so patriarchy, um, yeah. How does patriarchy affect? the reception of motherhood and the reception of fatherhood. Is there a difference between the two uh, when it comes to workplaces, when it comes to careers? How are the two taken? Um, in, it's, uh, so it's, I suppose one way would be that the bar for fathers is, is almost ridiculously low as a general principle. Um, we, we expect and this is globally the case. It's not just here, right? There is a lot that fathers are celebrated for that mothers are just, um, it's considered your duty as a mother to do it. But if, if a father is doing it, it's considered to be something that is worth celebrating. Um, things as basic as changing your child in public or or taking care of your child by yourself. It's These are things that fathers will be celebrated for while for a mother, it's considered to be the norm. It is considered um, part of your job. It is what you do because you are a mother. Um, and um, so, yeah, I think that there is a, a lot less that women are celebrated for. It, there is a lot less that women are given credit for. There is a lot of 
there is a lot of that conversation about okay but you know yeah you're doing all of this but everybody does this this is what all women will do this is what all mothers do so what makes you special and just keep your head down and just keep doing it there's a lot of that that comes along with it you know it starts from it literally starts from the day you become a mother um when if if there's something that you're not being able to get a handle on if there's something that's giving you trouble um the 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 common response that you will get from so many people is that okay but why is why is this a problem every woman does this every mother does this i think there there it's just commonly thought of uh as something that mothers are supposed to do you know, can you cite an example that, from your personal life from your experiences that could uh, explain that a little more yeah i mean it was uh, it was as basic as my husband picking up my my daughter from school um so there was a point when i when i started working at ideas uh, we had a schedule where i would drop her to school and he would pick her up from school and he would pick her up and then he would keep her for about an hour or so in the middle and it was uh, it was a really great system because it really worked for us and it gave me um i i think you'll mention i think you'll remember that i mentioned earlier that it's hard as a working mother it's often hard for you to find a consistent chunk of time to work right so because he was picking my daughter up from school um i would get like a 3 4 hour chunk to get a lot of stuff done in the middle of my day which is a rarity uh, for a lot of working mothers um so he would pick her up every day and he would keep her and for a lot of people that was something um completely uh new because they it it just took a lot of people by surprise and we would get a lot of as 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 a family unit we would get a lot of comments on it about how oh wow it's so wonderful for him to be picking her up from school and yeah it was wonderful because it gave them a lot of time together but i remember thinking i remember thinking okay but i have never heard that it is wonderful for me to drop her to school every day and and yet it's the same thing right it's like it's i'm dropping her and he's picking her and i don't see why there's a difference but the the volume of comments in both directions was just there was a world of difference there um so that that was one example that i can that that really appear as you can see really stood out for me as a mother yeah. i want to ask you because we just talked about this what are you doing to teach your kids and what can women do and men can do to teach their kids about the neutrality of gender roles um okay so that's a again that's a pretty hard question because um you'll remember that i mentioned that some days i really struggle with the idea that uh, you know individuals can do anything differently um but i suppose in a lot of ways what i my son is really really small right now but what i've always tried to do with my daughter at least is just to not uh make her feel like bo- she's boxed into anything you know there is a i try to keep her exposed to a lot of different kinds of things like there is um no there's never been a one dimensional sort of approach that i've taken to the kind of um activities i expose her to the kind of toys she's exposed to the kind of things she watches and just and as they grow up what i do want to do is which i think is a really common thing that a lot of um i've seen in a lot of households uh, i grew up in an all uh, like i only have sisters i don't have brothers so my parents never ha- made that distinction but i've seen this distinction in a lot of households that um there's a sense of how certain domestic responsibilities will be um a daughter's responsibility but they won't be the son's responsibility and a certain and certain responsibilities will only be the son's responsibility and not be the daughter's responsibility so what i want to try to do as my kids get older is to make sure those distinctions aren't there as in make sure they have the same kind of chores like really basic things like doing helping out and, and it's really important to me that my kids learn to be self sufficient that way right like not be completely dependent on somebody else to do your things for you like doing a basic load of laundry and just being able to feed yourself in the kitchen and things as they grow older i'd like them to be able to both to do the same things like what you choose to do with your life as you go forward is your own thing when you go beyond a certain point but you should not be in a position where you expect somebody to do anything for you whether as a woman and this is where patriarchy comes in because i feel like it also does a disservice to men like why is the burden of providing financially uh, financially only ever on the men so it that's also a question to explore right so i would i would not want my daughter to feel like she will always be taken care of financially because she's a woman and i would not want my son to feel like 
he can get away with being um completely useless at home um because he's he, he's he's a man so i would want that uh, balance to be maintained between both my kids i don't know how that will be achieved but that is what i want to do as they get older um i want to come back to this but before this i want to talk about yeah. you know parenthood right do you think spouses mm-hmm. and partners need to have a conversation to kind of create that environment where both are finding a balanced kind of support in the household as working parents and do you think that happens in your case um okay to uh, answer the first part of your question uh, first yes absolutely i think spouses absolutely need to have these conversations and i think very few of us do Uh, to the extent that it is required um because look having young kids and uh being at this stage of your lives is 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 stressful enough and busy enough as it is without you know trying to juggle two careers and lot and small children it, it, like it's all very it, this is just a very busy chaotic phase of your life anyway without uh being able to communicate about it and uh being being able to communicate about it is again not as straightforward as it should be because there's a lot as i said there's a lot that's expected of men and there's a lot that's expected of women so even if you are on the same page as a couple often you end up in situations where it doesn't work out equally right but it is very very important to have these conversations about um about finances about what whose career is in what stage and who needs what from their careers going forward again i'm not saying these conversations will strictly be straightforward they're also not conversations that can be had um once they're evolving conversations they're conversations that need to be revisited at different points in your life but absolutely it is fundamental to keep having these conversations if you want to you know be able to balance it all uh, together um in terms of whether um we were able to have these conversations i would say yes and no uh, we we went into it having had these conversations and um we figured out a balance that worked for us as best as it could um but i think where we underestimated it uh, and we this is why i said these conversations are evolving is that i think we need to revisit these conversations a lot more as your kids grow um so i think that's something that we have been working on and that's something that uh, needs to be kept in mind by if there's something i would tell people i'd say just keep in mind how often you need to revisit um you know just talking about okay where do we stand what do we need what do our kids need what do our jobs need and just taking it from there so so you talked about you know trying to maintain an environment in the house and teaching your kids yeah. about the neutrality of gender roles and about having yeah. conversations with your spouses as well let's talk yeah. about the societal level there are no easy answers i know but do you think about yeah. that yeah yeah absolutely i think about that quite a bit i think that uh, i mean one of the one of the first things that uh, most organizations need to do is have um, have daycare options um and a lot of organizations don't have those and what that ends up doing is in in situations where the burden of child care is primarily on women ultimately you put women in a position to come to make that compromise right are you going to figure out a way to manage your kids or are you going to be at work if there are on site child care facilities for organizations that are large enough and that can afford it which let's be honest a lot of them can then there should be that provision and 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 also in situations where um you know i i talked about spouses being able to balance it so for example if one person is working in a bigger organization and they have the provision of uh, of an on site daycare it doesn't matter if that if that spouse is, is the husband or the wife like it the child can still go there and the other and then the husband and wife can both figure out their work situation so i think that um that is the first most important thing that organizations need to do at that level um in addition to that i think there's a lot of flexibility that working parents need not just working mothers i think that's like th- there may be more conversations within that statement but i think flexibility is key um i as i mentioned earlier i have been very fortunate in a lot of organizations that i worked with to have had that flexibility um i remember when i interviewed at ideas i told them i said i can't be at office full time um like i can't sit here from 9 to 5 because i have a small at that time i only had my daughter and i said i have a small child 
and I can't be around. And they said, okay, what do you need from us to make this work? Which was, you know, one of the most supportive statements anybody can make, any, any, any organization can make. And that ultimate confidence in the fact that you are going to be, we value you enough to sit with you and figure out how we're going to make this work is something that a lot of women don't get. There's that general sense of, um, no, but you know, this is more important and just physically being present is more important. And that's not always the case. Um, I also think that uh, one of the things that really bothers me um, is that at a societal level, there's very little recognition of the fact that the fact that so many women end up dropping out of the workforce is, is not something that is solely the woman's responsibility. Like if there is a supportive if there isn't a supportive environment that's being created where women are able to balance everything and where working parents are in a perfect world where working parents are able to balance everything, then one parent will end up suffering. And because of our, uh, um, because of the current patriarchal uh, systems that we work under, it ends up being the woman. Um, but I and remember it doesn't help years anyone, ago. right? Because the kind of no, world we're living not. in now, both the parents, all the family members, they really need to be working to be supporting, you know, the household. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so it just absolutely. doesn't work in favor of anyone, right? You mentioned yeah. one thing about uh, workplaces, right? And workplaces mm -hmm. having uh, su supporting facilities for parents, right? I want to kind yeah. of direct our conversation towards what all of us just recently experienced at a global level yeah. and if we're currently also experiencing it it's the global pandemic right which yeah. forced us to bring our workplaces to our homes we were all working yeah. from homes did this situation kind of highlighted the challenges that come with motherhood uh absolutely <laughs> Absolutely. I think you speak to any working mother um, and they will um, have at least five examples of how much they've suffered this past year. And I think that the biggest uh, in that has been homeschooling their kids. You know, it's been um, it's been a challenge managing the homeschool and the work and the house. And if people have kids of different ages just figuring out that balance it's been it's been a really really difficult year for working mothers yeah it's been hard for for, for all uh, for everybody but I think the the burden of that has as always fallen more on women in general and working mothers like there's been a lot of research that's happened on that my office to plug in some of our research my office has done some research on that as well and there is a disproportionate burden that has fallen on women um, because of this pandemic. Um, and I think that we've, uh, we've, we should have come out of this having learned a thing or two, but I don't know. I think, but I don't know. I think cynically, I don't know if we have, I don't know if the world has. Um, Are you saying it's a lost cause? No, I'm not. I'm hoping it's not a lost cause because I think that one of the things that has uh, that has happened is uh, the understanding that flexibility um, in the workplace doesn't necessarily re result in um, a lack of productivity. Um, I know of uh, I know of at least one organization that has made um, it ha has worked out a system where they don't require employees to be physically present in the office all five days of the week. Um, so in a perfect world, what that would translate in is a division of childcare responsibilities between people who have for people who have children. It, it results in a division of childcare responsibilities on the days that both spouses are at home or at least one spouse is at home. Um, so I do think that there have been some um, organizations that have been quick to learn. I think there's a lot we're learning about how not every meeting needs to be on site and the benefits that you know, Zoom meetings bring um, and virtual meetings bring uh, uh, for organizations in general. But I think it perhaps, there is a small part of me that's a bit apprehensive about um, making sweeping statements about how, uh, how sustained this change will be. Um, and I think we'd have to wait for a few years to see what happens. Um, for now, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done to sort of roll back some of the 
ways in which women have suffered the past year i remember this one day for myself in the first wave where i i remember thinking i cannot take care of a small child because my son was i think one at that time i remember thinking i cannot take care of a small a small baby home school my kid do my job and clean my house like i cannot do all four of these things so i i remember making the and my ch- and my daughter really didn't want to be in school that day so i remember making the decision to just let her miss school because i said i cannot do it i cannot do all four of these things at the same time um so if i felt that way in a supportive in what is largely a supportive environment and with the support system around me i can't imagine what women who don't have all of these privileges that i do must have felt so there is a lot of work that is going to go into rolling back the ways in which uh, we've set you know women's progress back and and then we'll see if there is any sustained change that's going no, to of be. course it's going to be really unfortunate right because there's so many women like you who invest in their education and then they have dreams of their you know brilliant careers and they're doing great for the economy for the country for the society it's going to be a shame that they'll just have to drop out of the workforce or have to compromise on their careers just because they're not able to find you know a nice support him support system for themselves to raise their families and find the right yeah. kind of balance to you know carry forward in their careers right what is what is the future then i mean so i um okay i think that one of the one of the things that we really need to do is sort of reevaluate this this notion of what it means to be a working woman um because i think that the term working woman is uh, is is a bit misleading because um i i i there's there's a really phenomenal book on on women um on the gender bias in in research and in data that i've been reading recently and one of the things that book says is that there is no such thing as a woman who doesn't work essentially it's just unpaid work versus paid work right so i think for mm-hmm. this may seem like a very small change to make but i think one of the conversations that we need to start having is uh, about the value of all work that women do and about understanding how much of ourselves we put into it as women whether it's child care whether it's domestic responsibilities and whether it's being part of the professional workforce because i think that we struggle so much to feel like we as you said we 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 invest so much in our education we struggle so much to feel like we need to be part of the workforce otherwise our education will be wasted and i just don't think that's true anymore so i think one of the things that needs to be done is to take that burden away from women and to be like there is a balance that uh, yes there is a balance to be maintained in terms of being part of the workforce versus not being part of the workforce but there is no such thing as you not working because at any given time most women are working especially mothers yeah because who yeah. is placing value to what kind of work right again yeah. that takes us back to patriarchy and i think anything yeah. we're going to say is going to keep coming back to patriarchy back to that and yeah yeah it's a shame that you know no i don't think any woman signs up willingly signs up for this fight unfortunately you know a lot of women find themselves in the system where they have to be in that kind of a rat race you know to yeah kind of create value for themselves when the society is kind of trying to snatch it away from them right um yeah. and i hope this yeah. ends um and i don't know when it's going to end but i'm pretty sure all of us wish to see that day when it ends with that said mahin any parting message um i suppose for so for me um i think one of the things that i've been um i've been struggling with these days is is this notion of what it means to be a successful person right i think again as because of the kind of world we live in which places a lot of value on what you do um i think this notion of being a success comes a lot from what kind of work you do and where you are in it um so i i suppose what i would just say uh, to anybody who is struggling is to just keep revisiting your notions of what you want uh, what you're doing is a lot more than you realize i suppose that's 
how it is from my experience at least. Thank you so much for joining us because I know you had a very long day with work and with family, both combined. And still you found time to do this with me. I'm really thankful. I had a lot of fun talking to you. Thank you, Sapya. Same to you. And thank you so much for having me. It was a wonderful conversation.